Uh, sweet. So, uh, welcome. Uh, we are, uh, yeah, VSUP 2024. This is the leader volunteer orientation uh, launch info night extravaganza. Um, I hope y'all can hear me. Hope y'all can see my screen. Uh, people are joining. That's awesome. So they're going to continue to do that. My folks, I suppose if any other committee folks join, you can promote them as needed. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to keep on trucking here. So our agenda for the evening, got a couple of sections of stuff to go over. Uh, we've got the goals of BSEP. Uh, some logistics, uh, talk about the uh, BSEP base camps, the, uh, the base camp site for students, and then the volunteer base camp site that um, has information for uh, a lot of you. Um, and then uh, we'll have a Q&A question, Q&A ah, session. Uh, there's a chat um, and there's not a Q&A thing, so we will just uh, kind of freeform that with uh, the raised hands and uh, chat questions and stuff. We got um, committee folks monitoring chat. Um, and then, uh, like I said, a couple of helpful links. Uh, we're going to share this uh, presentation with you all. Um, so you've got the base camp link and the link to the volunteer site in here in case for some reason you need those. Uh, we've got a lot of awesome people uh, who work behind the scenes to make uh, BSEP kind of run uh, the, the logistics and all that stuff. So I have to give a big, huge shout out to the list of people that you see here. Um, we meet uh, currently, we're meeting uh, every couple of weeks, um, a lot of, lot of heavy lifting stuff going on. Uh, so just huge thank you to these folks, the time and energy uh, that they give to the visa program is, is awesome. And they are awesome. So um, cool. The goals of BSEP. Uh, by the way, my name is Joe Preston. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, I'm the BSEP committee chair. Um, that's me there. Uh, so yeah, anyway, sorry, just thought I'd do a little intro. Uh, goals of BSEP are, uh, well, the main goal of BSEP is to prepare students for our Mazama A and B level climbs. Um, a level climb, something like Mount St. Helens, probably summertime, and you know, uh, B level climb is you know springtime Mount Hood and others. Whoops, a daisy. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Mouse wheel is getting crazy, crazy mouse wheel. Uh, other goals of the program, though, we have sort of ancillary goals. Uh, we like to provide students with that foundation to be able to go on and take other classes, get more involved with the organization, um, all that stuff. Uh, there's a myriad of ways that that can happen um, through the sort of BSEP ICS AR track. We also have steep snow and ice back um and then you know other our other various programming um adventurous young mazamas the nordic the skiing families mountaineering we've got the trail trips and all the hiking and um you know around the mountain all that awesome stuff uh so that's what we're all here for you're all awesome our new students are going to be awesome and you know we're going to continue this um mazama tradition of awesomeness so that's what we're doing here. Back to the mouse wheel. Uh, okay, so other objectives, uh, you know, we're sort of taking this uh, new climber, um, giving them the introduction to mountaineering skills. Um, and for uh, more experienced climbers, we're, um, you know, refreshing certain skills. Um, building on existing knowledge, that kind of stuff. So we get various skill levels of students coming into BSEP, um, and that's okay. Uh, so it's okay for teams to sort of, you know, uh, be organic in, in, in how they work with students and what level of 
skills we're delivering. Uh, some logistics. We will have your um, student selection by February 9th. Um, we have currently, let me refresh the page here. Just gonna take a second, as you all know. We are at 156 um, applicants. Um, and our applications close uh, the 27th. So yeah, we will have teams selected uh, February 9th. Um, there's a order form uh, that folks should have in their inboxes uh, for ordering your um, BCEP shirt this year. Uh, shout out to Jackie for uh, the design. Um, and a deadline for that, if you could, this Sunday. Um, again, there's a link here, so we'll be sharing this presentation as well. And then we also have represented the peak recovery shirts. Um, as always, <clears throat> excuse me, gear nights, a uh, big thanks to Mountain Shop. Um, students will receive a 15% um, discount. Um, and then the dates should have been communicated to team leaders. Uh, so see your team leader for details on that. Um, and if anybody needs anything, you know, reach out to Christine or myself. Um, we will have ongoing volunteer opportunities um, of various kinds throughout the BSEP program. Uh, I'll talk about some, there's another one even uh, later on. Uh, but one of the things that we end up needing every year, and we really, really would love to have this represented at every um, Corpse Thief session, is a minimum of one dedicated safety captain. And, um, you know, that's someone who can oversee uh, gear placements, evaluate anchors, keep an eye on safety. Um, and if it's one person, then they also need to... Um, so they need to be like a like a C level climb leader or an AR grad, um, and it would also be good to have a wilderness first responder or minimum wilderness first aid. Um, so we'll be sending a link out to sign up forms for that. Um, but if you have that uh, that AR grad skill set. Um, or you're a sea level or greater climb leader, then uh, you know hit us up and uh, or fill out the form here. Again, we'll be sending that out as time gets closer. Um, folks who have taken the lodge host training, we're going to need you. Um, we need at least one at every Mazama Lodge session. Um, this can be a leader or an assistant, but we'd rather have it be separate. I think last year it ran into some issues where obviously a lot of the teams want to get out early the next day to go hike and do stuff. So um, got to make sure somebody stays around and manages the lodge, cleans it, cleans it up and locks everything up. Um, so I know a lot of you have taken that training. Um, I think there might even be some other trainings happening. I apologize. I don't know those dates or status of that off the top of my head, but I had heard stuff. So definitely check out the Mazama calendar, keep an eye on that um, and keep an eye on your inboxes for hosting opportunities. I know the committee is sending uh, those out to lodge hosts as well directly um, when those come up. Uh, trail trips committee is freaking awesome. And they're putting together the pre BSEP conditioning hikes again. So and you know, broken record, but check out the Mazama calendar. Um, they're going to be dropping those on there uh, anytime now. Um, yeah, we are uh, representing uh, a few affinity spaces this year. Um, you know, these are seen as kind of a door opener and not necessarily like a, a siloed up exclusive club. Um, 
we are working on ways to um, opportunities for teams to uh, be able to sort of have events where folks can co-mingle. We're sort of working on that. Um, might not all be in place for this year though, but um, you know, uh, this year our affinity teams are going to be the substance free uh, with peak recovery. Um, we have the, the queer Zamas represented, uh, the Latino team, the she, they, us team, and then the weekday team. So pretty stoked about all that. It's great. Um, you know, some notes on inclusive teaching, uh, things to think about, um, pacing, timing, gear, accessibility to car and transportation, um, thoughtful word choices, use of pronouns when introducing yourself, things like that. Um, folks obviously learn a bit differently uh, as individuals. Um, so if you can offer multiple ways of sort of teaching and describing stuff, providing information in multiple formats, uh, videos, awesome, people love that. Uh, asking questions, uh, Build in time for responses. Um, the classic new one uh, throughout the Mazamas is what questions do you have? Uh, and then you can count down from 10. Usually within that 10 seconds, someone will have a question, which leads to more questions, which is awesome. Love questions. Um, and as always, you know, you're all, like I said, you're all awesome. Lead by example, be great uh, stewards of the organization. Try to create, um, you know, great space for learning and, and growth. All right, curriculum and gear updates. Is this one me, Christine? I lost track of, uh, I just kept blowing through. I probably. Yeah, you talked right through my part, but you did, did I go well, through your so part? All right, I'll, hey, I'm, I'll I'm just, trucking. I'll just be quiet. Apologies, <laughs> apologies. No worries. I knew I was going to do that because I didn't mark like the sections. <laughs> Anywho, here I am. Uh, yeah. That's, I'm all stoked up today. What are you going to say? Uh, so anyway, career, I'm back to my sit back. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, curriculum and gear updates. Um, whoopsie. Thank you. So we still, uh, we still value uh, Freedom of the Hills, but it's not a required text anymore. Um, you know, I know on our team, I definitely encourage folks to get it. There's going to be a new edition coming out. It's in the works. I don't know release dates, anything like that. I heard maybe next year, but don't quote me on that. Um, uh, but yeah, if, if folks are going to go on and continue with this, um, you know, it's a good, uh, it's a good resource still. So um, good thing to plug for folks. Uh, yeah, fixed line travel. That's uh, changes. Uh, we had a climb leader update this year um, and uh, got all lined up on the fixed lines. Um, so here's how it goes from now. Uh, we have uh, the Prusik connection must have um, a triple action locker or two lockers opposite and opposed. Um, the triple action gate, you know, one of the pull down, twist, and open for three three actions. Um, so you watch out for the double. It's not a double. It's got to be the full triple action. Um, and then the other thing is we would like two connections for redundancy. So if you're hooked up with a Prusik, adding your personal pro usually has a, lo a locker on the end of it. Clip it as a loose uh, lobster claw connection. Um, and you can usually let that trail behind the Prusik. Um, and that's just as like, a, you know, catastrophic failure backup. Uh, we like to have those two points of, uh, of redundancy. Um, another update on this, and there's next slide will also help uh, help with this a little bit, but um, we want one climber per section, per open section of the fixed line. Now, there's two types of fixed lines. We have your isolated fixed line and a non-isolated fixed line. 
I think a lot of us are really in the Mazamas, we're really familiar with that non-isolated fixed line. So we have an anchor at one end, we have an anchor at another end, and then a lot of gear in between that is clipped loosely to a rope. It's not tied off. It's not clove hitched in any way on those sections. So what we're looking at there is one open section. Uh, so then that means only one climber on that line at a time. And that is to prevent if one person falls, there's a high probability that you could pull another person off by the way that the rope stretch and things happen. Um, but if it's an isolated section and or if it's an isolated fixed line and all those are clove hitched off, you can, you know, one person per each of those sections. Now, as climb leaders, um, you know, there are instances where uh, we can um, amend that. And, um, you know, there's, uh, if you've done it, this, the second pitch on Mount Washington is a, is a good example of something that's kind of like a horizontal meandering fixed line. If that kind of thing is open, you can use that that tends to be a little safer to have uh multiple people in those sections on an open fix line but um that's kind of on a leader discretion sort of thing uh so any questions around that you'll you know talk to your leaders and uh, hopefully should be able to clarify things um hey joe i wanted to make one comment there there might be another bullet point here and that is uh the terrain um you want to employ your fixed lines, like say for horse thief, you want to be using them on fourth class terrain, mm -hmm. not, not setting them up on, um, you know, long sections of fifth class. I mean, if there's a fifth class move, uh, you know, it's not a big deal, but you want to be sticking to fourth class terrain. Yeah, thank you, Guy. That And that also goes for the MMC as well. So if you're practicing fixed lines, um, not on the, uh, don't do them on the wall, do them on the back staircase or something like that. Um, cool. And then the last, and the last thing we'll add is just, um, the idea is that a climber should be able to manage or tend their prussic with both their hands as they climb every one to two feet. So that kind of gives you an idea of the type of terrain uh, that someone would be on for that. Um, here's a couple of visuals just to help folks. Um, here's a non-isolated section. Like I was saying, we've got an anchor one end, anchor another end. And then the isolated sections might look like something like this, like the clove or um, figure eight on a bite kind of thing. Um, so then extended repel has stuck. That is now our uh, primary method we'd like taught uh, for BSEP. Um, and, you know, I think most folks have done that by now, but we repel uh, with a sling that's girth hitched through both hard points on your harness. Um, the auto block is then connected to your belay loop with a locking carabiner. Um, and then we really like to enforce that keeping the, those two away from each other and why that is so critical for safety, uh, how the uh, getting them touching can uh, defeat the auto block and cause catastrophic failure. Um, and then, you know, if once students have, have done that a couple of times, or they feel okay with it, you know, then you can show them other methods if desired, if that's, if that's something that you all wanna do. Um, you know, and we're also showing uh, Grigri's folks uh, don't need to purchase them. Students don't need to purchase them. The content is on Basecamp, but um, if leaders have Grigri's, they're more than welcome to bring them. And again, that's that like secondary, if you have time, if, you know, if the, all the standard stuff has been met, if, you know, all the uh, teach to the test is sort of the way I've been taught. So if all the, the requirements for the tests have been met, then introduce something new like the Gree Gree, um, you know, same same key bus, all that stuff, but just a new device. Um, we're tagging this on 
keeping this along. Um, you know, it's a real, uh, up until very recently, a graduate of BCEP would have been able to essentially go from BCEP, walk down to one of the climbing gyms and take their um, top rope test and go, you know, go climb for days. Um, now that uh, assistive braking devices are required at the climbing gyms, um, you know, this is just kind of an app. It's an, it's an extra, if you have the time, it's a nice, nice to do, nice to have kind of thing. But um, the information is out there on Basecamp. Um, snow camping, uh, it seemed like there was enough folks that took advantage of that, took advantage of the content that we're going to keep that along as well. So during your lodge stay, you if, you know, uh, safety and everything is uh, pointing in the right direction, you can sleep outside, um, gives folks the chance to bail and head into the lodge if they decide it's not for them. Uh, but at a minimum, you know, going through uh, sort of, you know, what our values are and uh, some some strategies for staying warm at night and, and you know, cold uh, overnights and things like that, just to give folks a little bit of preparation because, you know, there are a couple climbs, Mount Adams, Middle Sister, <clears throat> excuse me, where they might be camping on snow, that kind of thing. I uh, actually heard a really good tidbit that a leader um took students instead of a uh, instead of a hike day they went to white river and um kind of did a smock snow camp setup but that was kind of a cool use of that um, a little more on snow camping here's a shot of that from the lodge um Belay from above, reminder, uh, same kind of deal. We'd like that done on the back stairs, not on the fifth class terrain um, at in, in MMC or at Horse Thief. Um, so that's gonna be good for, you know, uh, fourth class scrambles, low fifth class steep snow, that kind of thing. I'm still backed up with an anchor, all that good stuff. Um, some other methods, if you want, time allows, you can do some seated hip belay, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, belay from above on rock, reminder, belay from above on snow, uh, reminder, same kind of deal. Uh, different ways to back up using an anchor, picket, ice axe. Um, some gear updates. Uh, so let's see, I need to pull that up over here. Um, it's on the base camp site and on the volunteer base camp site, I believe. Uh, should be all up to date. Um, so, you know, standard stuff, climbing harness, uh, climbing helmet. Um, belay device this year, we are going to the full ATC guide with the loop. Um, uh, do have your students and folks be mindful of the skinnier models. Um, I think there have been some trouble getting the fat Mazama ropes through some of the like Alpine style devices. So um, do be mindful of that. But yeah, we, uh, we've had enough people who wanted to go on to ICS or wanted to do some more advanced uh, skills. So uh, that's kind of why we're, we're heading there. Um, your standard large locking carabiner for belaying, um, five locking carabiners, uh, medium D-shaped. And we have examples of all that stuff um, to help clarify sizes and shapes and things for folks that gets confusing. So we've tried to sort of streamline it a little bit. Um, one locking carabiner to help rack gear. Um, some folks like to get another one or two of those, but um, that's totally not needed extra stuff. And then we're going with one uh, nylon double length sling and one Dyneema double length sling. Uh, and then the 22 feet of uh, sterling accessory cord, five to six millimeter um, that we can cut up and use for the auto block, press it, uh, waste press it, and bike press it. 
Um, and then kind of a little addition uh, we've been trying to work on over the last year or so is um, adding in some of those extra costs that some of us don't, excuse me, always remember because, you know, we have gators and we have some of those extra things like rain layers and stuff that we've already had and used, but someone new to this coming in might not have all that stuff. So we kind of tried to give a price range on, on some extra gear that they may or may not end up needing. Um, and then as always, you know, we're, we're plugging the mountain shop for the gear rentals, um, for the mountaineering boots, ice axes, uh, crampons for snow weekend stuff. Um, cool, cruising right along. Uh, trail tending opportunities. Um, this is an exciting uh, kind of new development, um, literally hours ago. Um, and big shout out to the uh, Trail Trips Committee and Scott over there uh, for working with our uh, BSEP committee folks. Um, but this is kind of something, uh, because of our staggered schedule that we have now, which is um, where all, all the teams don't start and stop at the same time, that's something that used to happen with BSEP. Um, but over time, that with more and more teams, it put a lot more strain on uh, trails and trailheads and teams trying to get on the same trails and stuff. So we needed to spread things out a bit more, which is sort of the staggered schedule approach that we have now. Um, what that did though, is it kind of did away with the opportunity for like all 200 or so students to come together as, in one group and um, you know see that big mass of, of folks that are going through this together. Um, so we're looking for opportunities to try to bring some semblance of that back. Um, and our first major uh, effort for that is what we're calling our trail tending opportunities. Uh, we are going to have two opportunities that will get on the Mazama calendar, uh, March 30th, April 13th. Um, so keep an eye out for those. Um, details will come. There'll be sort of... Uh, a max, I think, number of folks, and um, it'll be open to all um, students and I'm assuming assistants. Anybody that wants to, that can sign up and there's enough room for, for you on the on the trail uh, tending group. Um, it sounds like they're going to both maybe be doing Dog Mountain, so uh, that's pretty cool. Or um, if not Dog Mountain, it'll, it'll be one of the other major gorge uh, trails that we uh, tend to visit quite often, especially, uh, you know, throughout the visa uh, time. So we're really stoked about this. Um, it's an opportunity. Each of these opportunities is open to all the teams. So like I said, that's a great, great opportunity for folks to co-mingle from other groups and other teams. Um, looking out for that. Um, all right, Rick, I know this is your section, so I'm going to shut up for a little bit and get a drink of water, but um, uh, I'm going to pass this off to you now. Thank yeah, you. Um, can you bring up the, the base camp on, or not? Sure, the website? Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. basically there's, there isn't much change, a few little words and something, but I do want to show them the, the main thing is the quizzes. Oh, so right. One bring second. that up and just show them where the quiz is. That's yeah. pretty much what I wanted to, them to really understand what we've done. Yeah, let me. Um... So at each section at the um, at the pull down, uh, there'll be a, at the bottom, it's a, a quiz. Basically, go to the learning modules and pick one of them. Yeah. Down at the very bottom, if you go down there, you'll see a little big red banner. Right there, acknowledge check. And if people click on that, then there'll be a little quiz. And there's um, emails and names and a team. So the plan is that you should be able to go check on your teams to see if they're doing this, if they're even going into it. They're, they're, and, and, you know, um, so that's the new thing. That's the biggest new thing we've got this year is this knowledge check ability and we'll see how it goes for next year. I mean, it's kind of a new idea. That was about it. There was not much else new in the in the system. 
And just a quick add uh, to this from, from my end for all the leaders on here. So I will send an email that explains in greater detail how you can access um, the results from your folks. It is fully up to you whether or not you want to use those quizzes. Again, um, we um, we came up with this idea as we got the feedback that not everyone takes good care of reading through the, um, through the manuals online. And um, we felt like this might be one option to make sure um, your uh, team is taking care of that. If you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't want to use that and I'm pretty sure my folks are going to survive without doing that, that is fine. That is up to you. If you feel like, well, we could actually integrate that and I would appreciate it, then go for it. We, as said, um, we'll see after this year if this is a helpful tool or if not. So your feedback uh, will be appreciated. And I'll send an email out uh, explaining how you can access the results from your folks. Thank you, Christine. You're awesome. Uh, all right. So what questions do you have? Um, everything we had for this evening. Cool. You're an amazing group of folks. Uh, hey, Joe. Hi. Uh, Sorry, uh, I, I was going to go those 10 seconds and make sure I had at least one question for the, for the group. Awesome. <laughs> um, is there firm and hard finalized schedules? I was a couple minutes late into this. So I don't know if that was discussed per team. Schedules should be set for the teams, yes. A um, couple of different ways you can look at that. Uh, one way is um, the Mazama multi-activity instance is open. I believe you all should be able to see this. I'm gonna go to chat real quick. Um, uh, Tim, also, sorry, no, the UES is not happening. Used equipment sale is no longer happening. Um, and then, sorry, running back to that last question. Um, so I dropped a link in chat that should take you to the multi uh, activity instance on the website that should have your team on it and all the team schedules should be there. Um, we also have uh, the scheduling sheet uh, that is available on the volunteer base camp site. Let me drop those links into chat for everybody as well. I'll give you base camp and the volunteer base camp. And then this recording will be on the volunteer base camp site. And um, Christine will send an email, I'm sure, out that has all that good info in it as well. But just so you have it, there's the volunteer site. And here is base camp. Boom. Hey, Joe. Yo. You mentioned uh, the trail tending uh, as kind of like cross group events i guess mm -hmm. what, there was some discussion about having lectures um i guess that didn't come together but i was just curious if you could talk about that. yeah that's the next sort of i think the next phase of this uh folks on the committee are um have work have started working on this idea of lectures uh lectures uh some kind of lecture series something that maybe it takes place at the mmc um, you know, I don't know that we will ever be able to get all of the, you know, 20 teams or so together as one again, but maybe there's two, three instances where, you know, three or four teams that are happen to be overlapping at their times, um, can, can join up, go for a lecture. Um, it, it hasn't quite come totally together yet, but we're close. I'm thinking it'll probably be a next year thing but there are there are multiple folks on the committee who are are very keen on it, so i had just forgotten all about that notion oh. until this session <laughs> no you're awesome it's good good 
I mean, I, I know, it, and but there's a lot of folks not on the committee who are keen on it too. So we're we are definitely aware and want to want to make sure that everybody knows we're working on that. Cool. Okay. Any last takers? Sweet. Well, got to give you a big thank you. Um, um, oh wait, hold on. Um, hey, hey, good. can you hear me? Hello. Hey, quick question. Yeah. So obviously we have all the assigned team, right? Yep. But there are certain dates like um I really couldn't make. For example, I cannot make any of the uh, rock weekend because of my um, prior uh, engagement. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance that I can also help other team, but not like my main um, team, so that I can continue to build sort of my skills? That's a great question. Um, I believe uh, we have we've been trying to start a list of sort of like general assistants, like a, a general pool of assistants who maybe don't have a leader, maybe their leader's not not hosting a team this year or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so if you want to eat, do you have the, oh, well, you can email bcep at mazamas.org um, or the bcep coordinator email and um, yeah. we will get you on that list just in case. Yeah, I do have, I will say I do have such a list for people who haven't had a leader or a team they were assigned with. And all those folks have been assigned in the meantime. The issue with that is like, as I'm getting multiple of those requests, I'm actually, I apologize for that, but I'm actually not able to manage that because, you know, there's too much going on. However, if you have a person in mind or a different team, please feel free to reach out to them directly. I know that there's a lot of folks who appreciate additional support at something like a horse thief session uh, for sure, but I do not have transparency on who this is. And I, to be honest with you, would like to not send an email uh, to all leaders being hired. Hey, I got another volunteer and another volunteer. You know, that is a little bit too difficult to organize at the moment. So long story short, feel free to reach out. I know there's a lot of folks who are interested in and I'm happy to provide the list of leaders and um, email addresses and so on if you want to look into that. But I do not have a list for for the specific um, activity and all the volunteers that, that come with that, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that sounds good, thanks. Cool. And then uh, there was a question in chat. Um, do leaders and assistants get together at all prior to the events uh, we are volunteering for to be briefed? Um, and I know some teams do, and it's kind of a team by team basis. I think some teams hold like, an assistant briefing ahead of the whole, um, ahead of all the all the activities, um, and then uh, you know on a activity by activity basis, um, that would that would be up to the leader. Um, another question came in: uh, Will we be using Slack again for Teams? Uh, and uh, yes, that's the idea. We do have, thank you for that reminder, actually. Uh, we do have a Slack group workspace set up. Um, I think last I had checked teams were being set up, uh, team channels and all that. Um, and as soon as that's ready, uh, there will be a link on the uh, volunteer base camp site for that. And then also it'll get emailed out. And thank you for reminding me to talk about that. Appreciate you. All right, cool. Well, that was 10 seconds. Uh, I will let you all go on with your evenings. I hope everyone is uh, doing well and getting stoked. Um, Stay uh, stay dry out there. I know it's getting a little rainy, so yeah. I'll uh, hopefully see you all out on the trail. Take care and really appreciate you.